Um, we're really excited to be here today. Um, as Elaine mentioned, my name is Jessica Reyes Suarez. I'm with SWA Group. Um, we're the consultant team that's working with the city on this park, park revitalization project. And today, what we're going to do is we're going to present some of that progress that we've been working on and some preliminary ideas. So, again, this is the full team. We have um, a team of consultants as well that are that's supporting this project and some of which are on the call today with us. So uh, where we left off since our last meeting um, on back in February 4th, we had a first community outreach meeting and at that meeting we presented a uh, online survey and a poll and we had 110 people respond to that. And really what we collected from that was some great data, some great public input that helped establish a vision for what people want for this park and for this area. And we took that vision and established a framework for what you're gonna see in tonight's um, design. So what the schedule is gonna look like for today is we're gonna just take the next 30 minutes, probably less, to just review some of that um, input that we received in the last meeting and then present to you these two design schemes. And then similar to our first outreach, we're gonna have a moment where we can do some interactive feedback. It'll be fun. You'll get to see the concepts again and, may, and give us your suggestions and your inputs. Um, and then we'll do some closing remarks. So hopefully we won't keep you all here too late. And just to give you a sense of where we are in this process to kind of reiterate what Elaine mentioned, we're in the middle of the concept design phase. So we're still um, right in the middle of this public input period. Um, as Elaine mentioned, these, these drawings are just conceptual. They're just to get a sense really of like the programming, the layout. Um, and once we present, uh, once we collect this information, um, we'll also present it to the city council. Um, and then once the city is ready, this would go on to schematic design. So that's when you get into more of the detail, um, but there's still plenty of opportunity for the public to be involved in this process here. Um, just to summarize, what did we hear? So we heard that, you know, people love this park, but it does feel disconnected, feels isolated from downtown. And um, people would like to see more connections, like a more connected park. And even though it's not an inviting park today, uh, it's still a really important green space, just like what Elaine mentioned. It's really important to downtown fabric, um, to what makes up the downtown Culver City community. And we established these like hierarchy of themes to collect input. And in regards to the connectivity, we did hear that, you know, some people would be willing to park across the street. So that kind of provides an opportunity for what the existing parking could look like. Um, and also a good amount of people also responded that they would be willing to perhaps, you know, take another form of transportation to get to the park, walk, bike, scooter. Um, and then there's also a lot of support for how this park is going to support the, the local businesses. There's a lot of value for the local businesses. So really what, what makes this park harmonious with what's already happening in the downtown Culver community. And in regards to ecology and open space, an overwhelming support for the value of an open lawn, a flexible open lawn space. And um, in addition to that, open space, it's really how does it blend in to the downtown fabric, you know, it's bounded by these major roads, it, you know, it plays a significant part of connecting this community connecting across um, to the Palms neighborhood as well. And in regards to programming, um, we received a lot of um, comments and um, improving the lighting, um, having seating opportunities, maybe a restroom, drinking fountain. These are all little elements that could be included in this park. Um, some support for having and um, visiting maybe a small food kiosk. Um, but really, again, to kind of reiterate that flexibility, a lot of people supported more flexible programming, like concerts in the park, movie nights, exercise, yoga, maybe goat yoga, I've never done it myself, but maybe. <laughs> um, and a lot of interest in integrating the, you know, the already really exciting arts community as well um, in Culver City. Go. 
And in regards to maintenance, um, a lot of almost unanimous support or <laughs> unanimous consensus that um, there are some you know, sense of security concerns, um, something that could be improved, perhaps it could be improved with an improved lighting. So these are all considerations that we took um, uh, in helping establish what is important to the community and what we should really prioritize when designing the framework for this park. So before we get um, jump into those concepts really quick, we just wanted to reiterate um, the importance of Media Park. Um, it's always been a historically significant area. Um, it was, you know, in the early 1900s, part of one of the more popular Pacific Electric line routes, the balloon route. Um, it's home to the Ivy substation, which is on the National Register. And, you know, even though the park is moderate, um, it's, it still has a very important impact to the community. And we still we believe that you know, an upgraded design can continue that importance to the community today. So here's just a quick, so what you're looking at is um, just a quick diagram of some site opportunities. So if you look to, um, to your right, you'll, you'll see the legend there. So if we start with number one, um, one of the opportunities we see is that parking. Um, if we reduce it, we can expand the park. Um, there's also an opportunity to perhaps temporarily close Canefield and that could expand the, the reach of, and of the park as well. And um, having an open, open lawn area, improving security, perhaps some ecological considerations like stormwater management, um, native plantings. Um, we're also thinking of how this can support the multimodal community. Um, if you know, it's in downtown Culver, it's very multimodal. Perhaps there's, you know, parking, scooter parking, um, increased lighting, and of course, you know, very important to um, improve those pedestrian connections to the park to have it be more accessible to the rest of the community. And then when we think of the constraints for Media Park, um, of course, Venice Boulevard is a major road. Um, there's a lot of traffic, perhaps a lot of noise that also really impedes on pedestrian access to the park from Palms neighborhood from across the way. And um, there are also some physical constraints. Well, they're more like physical considerations that we need to make when thinking of the park layout, like the mature trees, for example. Um, we, we need to consider how we're laying out the park, you know, around those mature trees. And of course, the um, historically significant building where the Actors King is. So those are things that we're considering with how the park is flowing. How do we move through the park? Um, so let's jump through here. Okay, so when we're setting up the design framework here. We have, we're going to be presenting you with two design options. And both options have a scenario with parking and without parking to give you, a, not without parking, with reduced parking to give you a sense of what the park would look like with both options. And of course, we're also considering the, um, the city supported programming, like a flexible pop-up cafe, how does it support the local businesses, an open lawn, stage for events or for the actors game. Um, it's really important you know, to connect to the Palms neighborhood as well as into downtown and integrating that public art um, feature again. So we can start um, with this bubble diagram. And again, the elements you see on your right were you know, some key support that we received from the last community meeting. Um, and we're starting to see how this will spatially lay out in the park. So we have, you know, an area for the actors game and perhaps there's an urban stage, um, an open space, that open flexible lawn space, um, maybe like a nature walk or an art walk and a pop-up cafe area. And of course, we're also thinking of that existing parking and, you know, what we can do with that. So you'll see with the concepts presented that they're very similar because they have this bubble diagram as the base, as the framework. Um, and it's really just the reconfiguration that you'll notice that are, that are slightly different. All right, let's jump into it. 
option one. <laughs> so option one, we're calling the arc and it's uh, really considering the important history of the film industry in Culver City and looking at those film reels and looking at the curvature of that and how we can find and reflect those curvatures in nature. So now you're looking at this mood board and you're seeing how those curvatures play out in real life. If you look at the, um, that lawn area, that kind of half dome, some, you know, some color palettes here. Um, this is just to give you a, just a quick inspiration or sense of what it could look like. And then here, what you're looking at is the uh, site plan for this first option. And what we're seeing is the option where we keep the parking as is. Um, so you can kind of see that bubble diagram come to life in a more cohesive manner here. We have um, the uh, along Venice Boulevard, we have that landscape area, maybe there's um, a buffer zone to help with the sound along Venice. Um, what's really, what would really help with that too is that, that stage number four, um, that would really help with that as well. And you'll see this, um, the sidewalk along the Canefield Culver kind of leads you into like this key, that uh, pop-up kiosk area. And number six is like a, um, maybe some fun swings, um, or like some artistic swing element there. And of course you have that large open, that open lawn area. So if we, and another thing to know is like those improved access points to into the park. And then when we jump into um, the scenario where we reduce the parking, I'll flip back and forth a couple times because I mean, it's so close, you may miss it. Um, there you go. So here you go, where we reduce that parking, what you see is the park kind of gets pulled in a little bit to um, downtown a little bit more. So it's a little more connected into downtown. And I mean, the big difference here is that you really get to open up that lawn, that flexible lawn, that lawn space. And then you create this um, corner here, which can really act as like an iconic element to tie in the rest of um, the downtown area. So it'd really be a really cool feature. And something to note is, you know, we, we still have a drop off here, um, right in front of Actors King, and there's still some parallel parking spots um, along those palm trees, number seven. Well, I'm not sure if those are palm trees, but along those trees, number, uh, number seven, you still, we still maintain some parallel parking spots there. And here is that option again, just to give you a view of what it would look like uh, with, this is the existing parking. So as is existing parking, you have that lawn, the kiosk, the stage, those fun swings, number six, you kind of see those improved access points into, into the park. And if we move into that open lawn area, you kind of see the park be pulled out just, just a little more. Maybe there's some um, terrace or step up uh, stairs into this lawn area where you get some more flexible seating. Um, and again, you still have that drop off. You have those parallel parking spots. And then you have this, this really nice iconic intersection here to really bring it in into the rest of downtown. And let's look at that at the eye level too, what that looks like. Um, you really see, you really feel like a more open experience now with these improvements. You have kiosk stairs, that lawn area. And then you really have a nice view into that um, historic building right there where the actors gang is. Great. So those beautiful mature trees found um, in the park. Losing you. Um, we can play be a little playful with that, uh, with the park layout and the park design. Uh, Jessica, you froze. Yeah. So you froze. And so we did not hear any of this. Uh, of oh, stage. I'm sorry about that. That's okay. I just want to let you know. Thank you. Great. Yeah. I was just um, saying how this inspiration is, uh, you know, it's inspired by the, the roots, the mature trees at the park and how those curvatures that can be a little playful and we can find those like curving elements within, within this park design as well. So if we jump in again, here's another mood board for that, kind of showing you what this could look like in a physical realm, just fun 
root canopy, maybe some more like bright eccentric colors. And there's also a play between like this linear and curving um, elements. Okay, and here we are into the site plan. You may look at this and like blink and it's like, is it the same one that I just saw? Um, like I, I mentioned before, like the, the base and the programming is really similar, but really what we're starting to do is just reconfigure it a little bit. And um, it's just, yeah, so it's really just how the configuration is of it. So let me just point that out to you. So what you see like number four and three, um, that's that stage and there's a shade canopy. So what this option does, it kind of just brings it in a little bit more into that building. So perhaps it's more um, architecturally connected to, to the building there. Um, and you still have number eight, you still have that pop-up kiosk, um, but it's perhaps, you know, set into the park a little bit more, it's a little bit more like a nature feel. It blends a little more into this um, number six, which is, a, which is an art walk. And again, with this option, with maintaining the existing parking, um, you could, yeah, you would still have the existing parking there and then you'd still have this open lawn area. So if we jump again to that reduced parking option, let me go back and forth a couple of times to help you, to help you really see it. What we do is create this, like this um, more iconic promenade along Culver Boulevard. We still keep that drop-off area right there. We still keep some parallel parking spots. And then again, like what I mentioned from the previous design, number 10, you still have like an iconic way to visually tie in the park into the, into the rest of downtown. So if we look at that in those views, so again, this is the view where we keep the existing parking. And you'll see here, number eight, you'll see, you know, that kiosk tucked in a little bit more to the park. You'll see number four, number three, where that um, stage is, where that shade canopy is, perhaps it's a little more connected to that building. Um, and what we were thinking as well is like, we could still have overhead lighting here and maybe this parking, we can keep it, but perhaps it's closed for temporary fairs or events. So um, you can still have some flexibility there without removing all of the parking permanently. And again, like with a key um, concept with all of these is really maintaining these like mature trees that are um, significant and important to the park. All right, so we jump into that reduced parking view. Let me go back and forth. And that's that, you know, that vast promenade area that, that I mentioned. Again, that iconic element on the corner. This could be, you know, some flexible space. It could be for fairs, for events. It could also be for more flexible um, seating and some overflow from that cafe. Um, and again, you still have that drop off. You still have that, you still have those parallel parking spots. And here we are right there. Here's that eye level view. And this is the eye level view with that promenade. So that's with the reduced parking option. So with these concepts that's, that you've seen, just to reiterate, we took those elements from the last community meeting. We saw, okay, what was really important here, having that flexibility, having that open space, um, you know, having some, you know, ecological components, some, uh, native landscaping and having an opportunity for more flexible programming. So what we're gonna do next, I know I went through some of those a little quickly, but I wanted just to get, you know, your feet wet with a little bit in them. And what we're gonna do now is um, have a more interactive um, part of the meeting where I'll pass it off to Winnie and she'll um, teach us how to log on. We will need your smartphones for this next event here. And we'll share these concepts again with you and we wanna get your feedback. So I'll stop sharing. Thanks, Jessica. Uh, again, this is Winnie with Esselano and I will be leaving this interactive session of this meeting where we'll go over the two design schemes again in further detail, ask you some questions to help us further enhance the designs to fulfill the community needs. There will also be an opportunity for you to ask any clarifying questions um, in each of the slides for our team to answer. So with that said, let me share my screen and I'll walk you through um, what we'll need you to do. Okay. 
All right. Just like before the last meeting, we will be using Mentimeter for our session. So if you can do um, one of two things, one is to pull out your, oh wait, hang on. Let me put in the chat the link really quick. Here's the direct link. If you can either open a new tab or a new window, or simply take out your smartphone and use this QR code. So once you go into the link or go to menti.com, use the code 16552468. And if you have any technical difficulties, please um, let us know in the chat function of Zoom. And please keep this, uh, the window with the Zoom because we will be using the audio to kind of walk through each of the slides. And Leah, um, if, and if you also have any questions that you would like to either ask using the chat function, you may do so. Um, and Leah on our team will um, ask what, um, ask the questions out loud for our team. I'm just gonna follow up, Winnie, that if you are on your phone and you use the QR code, you should just be on a landing page with the QR code um, since we have not shared, that's what we're sharing right now. And yes. as Winnie moves the screen, you'll see the other things. Yes. All right, um, I'm hoping everyone is on the survey. So what we'll be doing for the next 45 minutes is going through the three buckets that Jessica had mentioned, which includes connectivity, ecology and open space, as well as programming. So for the first set of questions, we will be talking about connectivity. Sorry, it's kind of lagging on my end. And we need also to um, reiterate, uh, if people aren't following along with the survey right now, um, will we'll we share this link as well, similar to, to last time? Yes. Okay. So this question is asking um, to take a look at these two schemes. One has existing parking and this on the left side of the two options. And then on the right side is the reduced parking. Uh, Jessica, I wanna invite you to kind of talk about some of the differences of the, the one with, to kind of reiterate what the difference is with existing and the reduced parking for each of the options. Right, exactly. So again, so each option we show what the park looks like if we don't do anything to the parking that's there and what it would look like if we take away the spots and add the parallel parking spots. So that top row is that first option, the arc. So with that option there was more of like that, that curving, that curvature walkway, um, which really reflects to how that open lawn space looks like. Um, it has the... Um, it has that uh, that kiosk uh, along right along Kingfield Culvert. Um, a little it's connected through that sidewalk, so you can right, walk right through that. Um, it has that uh, that stage. There's still an urban stage area there. And again, when we pull the park with the reduced options, perhaps you know that's a lot larger of that lawn space. You still have that drop off area. You still have those parking spots along the side. And maybe that lawn has like a step up where there's some more um, more flexible seating where people can just hang out there as well. Um, so that's the big difference between that first option. That second option, um, again, is think a little bit, you think about it a little bit more of like more nature focus. I guess you'll see uh, the lawn is a little bit more blended in into that cafe area. We have. Um, an art walk versus more of a nature walk in option one. Um, and it's also that more linear promenade connection there, where if you reduce the parking, you have that opportunity to perhaps create some more flexible space. Great. Um, 
here is a question. Um, you can also ask questions on the bottom and we will go through those questions. But the question here is, do you prefer a scheme with existing parking to remain or reduce parking? We'll give a few minutes for people to cast in their votes. Um, and again, on the left side, you'll see in option one what the differences between existing and reduced parking. While we look for people to vote, um, let's answer some of these questions. Um, how will these designs reflect the concern that the current design closes off the park visually from Palms? Yeah, so um, a, a part of that is kind of improving um, the configuration of those entrance entrance points along Venice, like existing now, there's kind of like a weird zigzag to get in. So the improvement there is really kind of opening up that area. Um, I guess you would want to note too that in the second option, there is that shade structure. Um, so it, it's not like a hindrance, but there is a state structure there and it's still gonna be open there, but I guess a more open feeling would be that, that first option. Great. There are a lot of questions. Um, yeah, that's great. <laughs> uh, I don't think we'll be able to answer all of them at all. Okay. Uh, I could make my answers a lot shorter too, I'll try. <laughs> okay. So far we have, um, It'll help if you can upvote some of these questions that we can go through. Um, let's see, there's emphasis on pop-up cafes. Have you considered an entryway at Canfield and Venice to invite users from the northern side? Currently the park is very blocked off from the parents on the north side. Um, so there are, yeah, there are entrances on all side. Um, again, that pop-up cafe, it, um, the idea is that it could be a way to activate the park and it could be something that's flexible and rotating and, and very well could be in support with some of those local businesses there. Yes. Will the stage be, yes, the stage, will it be raised at all? Um, Julissa, is that stage raised? I think, I, I think the seating is raised. It's on option thing. one, yeah. And then for option two, the lawn is raised as well. So there's like a slope for that. And it is, the, the lawn isn't the stage per se, but you know, it's uh, it's an opportunity for seating to be a bit more in the amphitheater style. Mm -hmm. Great, okay. Um, again, we can't go through all of these, but I'm also looking at the, uh, the chat um, also in the Zoom. Is it possible to have the shade canopy with option one? Make, Everything is possible. Yeah. <laughs> Make the existing parking all handicap. Where would they park otherwise? There mm -hmm. is an existing parking garage across the street. Exactly. Yeah, there's existing parking right across the street. Mm -hmm. And there's awesome. also, just keep in mind, there's also metered parking along Canfield and parking along Venice. So this, this mm -hmm. particular park has parking on all sides. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and the handicap, I, I imagine there would be like an accessibility component to the stalls that would be there in the reduced parking scenario. Great. Okay. Uh, maybe at the end we can go through um, some of the questions, but uh, so far there is a majority of the people here um, liking the reduced parking scheme. Okay, going to the next. All right, for the second one, which scheme feels more connected to downtown and the adjacent to neighborhoods? Again, as you're typing in these, I'll continue on with some of these questions. Would there be improvements to pedestrian crossing, striping, et cetera? The park is very disconnected because of Venice Boulevard. 
yeah, Elaine, I think that um, there are other improvements happening along Venice, um, but the striping along Venice, I believe, is that a part of that uh, different move Culver City effort? Yeah, that's, that's something different. I think just to keep this focused, why don't we focus on, so it, so we're not all over the place, let's focus yeah. on answering the questions and then we can address the questions at the end. That way we can take one thing at a time. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, so with this one, it seems um, people favor the reduced parking. Now the next set of questions involve around ecology and open space. And Jessica, I'm gonna invite you to talk about the differences between option one and option two here. Yeah, so the lawn square footage is you know, almost the same. It, it's very, very similar. Um, and both the scenarios consider the, uh, the protection of some of those mature trees. Both of the scenarios would be including um, native landscape plantings and perhaps uh, um, some stormwater detention. So those are elements that could be applied in both. The uh, option two, um, you could see that's more like a, maybe a wilder wilderness-esque <laughs> um, feature there where the, the cafe is a little bit more tucked into the park. Um, and option one, it has more of that open lawn area that's kind of centered in. Um, but yeah, those are the, the two key differences there. And the difference between that lawn space as well as Felisa mentioned that option two, it, you know, it's kind of raised a little bit. So you'd be seen down into that amphitheater. Um, but that first option as well, it kind of steps up too. There could be seating on the other side. Um, yeah, those are the key differences. Thank you, Jessica. Now for this question, which option do you prefer in terms of open space distribution? Option one, arc, or option two, roots? And continue to um, write your comments and questions in the Zoom chat. Uh, we'll have that saved and we'll incorporate those as well. I'm not sure if you can see the results if you're on the actual survey, but right now it's really neck and neck between option one and option two. Option one has 11 votes, option two has 10, with one person voted with no preference. Oh, now it's tied. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I kind of set it up that way by saying how similar they are. <laughs> But after looking at these a little further um, throughout the evening, you'll you'll see some how different. Yeah, you'll mm -hmm. see how different they are. All right. Moving on to the next question. Next, we will center on programming, and we'll go to each one. So, Jessica, I'm gonna invite you again to talk about the programming between option one and option two. And again, both of these renderings, we are showing the option with reduced parking. Just a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the programming here, you'll see again, it's emphasis on that flexibility. You have that curved open lawn space. Um, you have that kiosk and some like fun, maybe like interactive big swings, uh, that urban stage with the step ups um, as well, number four. Um, some type of iconic element to tie in the park. Um, and yeah, that's the, the first option there. And the second option, I don't know if it's showing yet. Yeah, the program, uh, the big difference here you'll see is that um, promenade, that large promenade area that could uh, be additional flexible space for bears or um, markets or things like that. 
Um, there's still that flexible open lawn space. Um, there's there's improved lighting on both parks. You know that was another important feature. There's seating elements in both parks. It's just um, uh, what type of seating is different. So from that first option, that flexible seating is along the step ups along that that open space. The flexible seating here kind of is the overflow from that cafe area along to this along this promenade. Great. Thank you. So for the next question, which option do you think most fulfills the desired program at the park? And I am going to pull it up again in a bigger screen. If you're on your phone, feel free to click on the, the image to enlarge it. And I'll hover back and forth. All right, uh, for the preliminary voting, we have 10 votes for option one, the arc, followed by seven votes for option two, roots, and three with no preference. Some people need the QR again. Right, Julius, sir, when you can put that in the chat, please. I have put the link. in the chat. Thank you. Uh, since then, uh, here's the updated votes. We have 10 for option one, eight for option two, and four no preference in terms of programming. All right. Moving on to the next question. This will be a word class, so we are going to invite you to look at option one, the arc, and put in the chat, you have three options to write, what is your favorite feature? And I'm going to zoom in the image. So again, this is option one with the arc. If you can put in the word chat, what are some of the aspects that you like in this design scheme? A lot of people are liking the stage. Light is good. A lot on the open space and open lawn. The artwork on the corner of the promenade is something that people like as well. and how it's inviting. Thank you, these are really, really good. Um, Sorry, Janine, uh, I know you clicked too fast. Um, I think we are following the, uh, the moderator presentation. So um, you'll have an opportunity if you go back on here, I'll click on it again, if, you, if there's a way to go back. But, and yes, we are saving the comments in the chat as well. Um, and so far we see a lot of people talking about the stage, the art at the corner, the light, and the green space. 
You're welcome, Keenan. All right, moving on to the next word cloud option. Back in the option one, the arc, what, and it, we'll invite you to the word cloud again, if you can type in, what do you think is missing from this design? And again, you can click on the image to enlarge the image. So far, a lot of people are um, mentioning the trees. Trees are missing from this particular design. Shade. Green space. And also on the chat on Zoom, people are talking about the same things. Shade, trees, bike parking is another one. Lighting is, is something that's missing. Native plants, kid space, accessibility. Flexible seating, furniture, playground area, color. I think this is it. Thank you. Now we will be asking the same questions. Oh, I think we have a few more people typing in there. So, so far we're hearing a lot about lighting, native plants, existing trees, kid space, and accessibility and shade on this one. All right, moving on to the next. Next question. Now we're looking at option two. Same thing, we are gonna invite you to a word cloud to talk about what is your favorite aspect of option two, roots. A large damage. Hey Winnie, sorry, this is Jessica, I got uh, kicked off my yeah, Zoom, is, but, I, <laughs> but I'm back on. <laughs> okay, yes. Um, we're just going through the word clouds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Option two now. So far, I don't see any questions, but. We see a lot of people mentioning trees as their favorite aspect of this design scheme of option two. The stage is also favored. Grass. There's more trees and wider walking. The stage, take out the canopy. They like the stage, but taking out the canopy. Um, landscaping, the layered steps, curvy shade element, lighting, large walking space, more trees, a wide sidewalk, 
accessibility and the reduced parking. They really like the wide promenade um, and added with architecture. Let's see what's on there. Okay. All right, well, thank you for this. I will turn it over to the next. Okay, now for this next question, I believe this might be the last question. Well, what do you think is missing from this design scheme of option two routes? What's missing from the design? People are mentioning native plants are missing. Seating. The water element is missing. Kids space, signage, table, a flower garden, parking. tables, it's missing the community feel, a welcoming feeling, respect for the historic building, um, Megan, Sullivan, I received your message. Um, if you can type your comments on the Zoom chat, we will take into account your comments. I hope that helps. And we're receiving a lot of comments on, on, on the Zoom chat and those are very, those are all very helpful. Thank you. Um, just an update on what people are saying. Native plants is what is missing, seating. Um, they find that the park is a little too dark. Um, space around the cafe. Let's see. The, ki the kids' space is missing, it was mentioned that several times. Water element, signage, and also looking at the chat, I'm kind of doing multitasking as well. I'm seeing a lot of comments, which is all very helpful. Okay. okay let's moving on to the next one. Now we are, we are going to invite everyone to provide open comments um, beyond what is provided in the Zoom chat. It would be great to have a 360 view. Um, yeah. So feel free to go on this section to publicly put in your open comments.
Winnie, so the open comments are done through Mentimeter, but the chat is got quite a bit of comments too. So, yeah, so how are we aligning all of that? Um, I'm going to invite Leah to help me out with the comments on Zoom. It's kind of difficult for me to. Right. Okay. So, so what we're seeing here, everybody, and thank you so much for this. This is great feedback. What we're seeing are a lot of common themes in the chat. And so I think um, what will be helpful, let's, um, if you have kind of a, just a, a, a thought process um, that you want to put in the open comments for Mentimeter, that would be great. So I think what we'll do is we'll focus on the Mentimeter open comments, and then we can go through the chat and we can actually talk about questions. Because um, mm -hmm. we can group these comments by theme. We're seeing a lot of themes about entryway and art walk on Venice, concern about um, shade, concern about grassy area and mature trees, the fabric and flavor of the park. So there, there's a lot that we're seeing that's similar. So um, we'll try and kind of try to quickly theme these out and then focus in on actual specific questions. So hopefully that will work. So yes, put your open comments or your just general thought process into Mentimeter and then we can go through that and then we'll go through the, the Zoom chat. Yes, I think the common theme that I'm also seeing through both the chat and the Mentimeter is about the lack of kid space or wanting more kid space. Um, also, the parking in the cafe. Wanting some reduced parking and expanding the, uh, the area. And also going back to some of the earlier comments um, about missing the water feature element. Some of the options. Yeah, are you also capturing some of the themes from the chat? Yeah, I I I also just want to note that, and sorry, if there's background noise. Um, that all of the comments will also be looked through beyond Mentimeter. So they'll be mm -hmm. captured from the chat. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, there is also questions about um, its connectivity to both cities and both sides. Um, I, I think there's also some questions about what is the right balance of green space, shade, um, what's um, sustainable, um, sorry, I'm, I'm uh, going, running through these right now. Um, someone did bring up about the opportunities for local food vendors or businesses um, as, as an opportunity for the park as well. Um, yeah. Right, Leah, that's the, I, um, I get there was a lot of comments on that um, kiosk or that pop-up area. Uh, that would be um, the idea that there would be, it would be designed in a way where you could have um, a variety of different types of vendors have a pop-up area there. Um, of course, none of that is completely fleshed out at the moment since we're still in this early on stage, but that's, ki that's kind of what the idea was with that one. And also, yeah, we're here, I'm seeing a lot of uh, people perhaps um, not getting a sense of what the view looks like on, on Venice um, because we, we showed one angle. So those are helpful comments too. But there are, um, you know, connections, openings into the park at, at all sides, just to, just to clarify that. And the, um, in regards to the uh, uh, 
playground feature. Interesting, we didn't really hear too much of that from, from the first meeting as um, an important element for this park. Um, so that's, you know, that wasn't really picked up as um, a, a programming concept, but that's, no, that's, that's great feedback. Yeah. Um, we have some questions. Yeah, were there any other questions that um, perhaps, you know, Lisa or I or um, the city can help answer? I know we had a lot, but we can get through a few of them. Yes. Um, I, I stopped the scrolling of these comments. There's a lot and there's also a lot in, in the chat. Um, pretty diverse comments for sure. Uh, but we will take into this consideration. Um, let's go through some of the questions. Um, actually. I would like to, to address one on seating. And I agree that we could have um, more seating opportunities. And right now we're not really showing specific furnishings or furniture. Uh, yeah, we could consider built-ins as well and in addition to the furnishing. So yeah, that's, that's a good point. sharing my screen. Okay, that was the end of the presentation. Actually, let me go back and look at some of the questions. Um, as I'm going through the questions on Mentimeter, Leah, can you help me um, kind of go through some of the chat on Zoom for some questions that could be answered? Yeah. Um, do you want to? How would you want to do this? Do you want to read them from Mentimeter, and I can collect? I can do collect the Zoom ones for you, or? Yes, please. I'm gonna reshare. Let me reshare my screen again. I think we answered that one. Yeah, Elaine and Julissa, feel free to see which ones you can answer. Why do you both? Winnie, let's just start at the beginning and um, and we can try and just touch base. I mean, obviously this is a conceptual plan development, so we're not gonna have complete mm -hmm. answers to everything, but let's make sure that we address as many as possible. Okay. So first question, and we've seen this theme commonly, I know we've got some of the neighborhood council from Palms here. Um, there's a concern that this design closes the park off visually from Palms. They'd like to see um, if there's some type of what the entrance elements and pot potentially public art are happening at the Venice side. So I think that, um, so I think that's not, you're correct, that was not shown in these design diagrams. Um, other than they're looking at these different openings, but maybe that's something that they can work on is to figure out how that connection is. I'm presuming that that's the concern is that most of the Palms folks will walk across the street at Main Street or Bagley um, because we do not have authority. Um, I know Daryl's here from the city of Los Angeles, but we don't have authority to put in a crosswalk um, with this particular. So if we're talking about where we think most of those Palm folks are gonna come, it would be coming from Bagley from Palms and or over from the Noah's Bakery, Starbucks from that from that shopping center. So it looks mm -hmm. like there's some concern about that. Okay, let's go to the next one. So why so much emphasis on a pop-up cafe? That's a historical issue. And that's when I say historical, that's just an economic development historical issue. We've wanted to have a cafe in this park and we've studied having a cafe or some type of activation 
in this park for almost 10 years. Um, studies show that activating a park either with somewhere to eat or to get a drink or even incorporating restrooms into some type of facility um, can actually make the park go from something that's visited on a, on a, on a small, um, not very many hours in a day to something like you know, 12 hours a day. We also think a pop-up cafe could potentially support, or at least we did before the pandemic, could potentially support some of the, um, the experience that one would have if they're at the actor's gang. So we, so I think the, the reason that the pop-up cafe was originally put in there um, was to really have sort of a specific experience that's happening in the park. But we obviously, of course, are supporting our local businesses in downtown as well. Um, and we are trying to build those connections. So that's, it's not emphasis on the pop-up cafe, but it was an element that we have been studying for a long time that um, we specifically and council in the RFP had asked us to continue to include. Next question. So I guess this one goes back to the entryway at Canfield in Venice. So I think that's something we definitely need to look at and make sure that we have um, some type of design aesthetic or, or, and I'm sure there is one, it just needs to be shared. Mm -hmm. And this is the same question, um, it, the feeling that there's a barrier, that there isn't connection between Venice and downtown Culver City. Um, so a barrier between downtown Culver City and Venice Boulevard. I don't know that there's supposed to be a visual barrier, but we recognize some of the comments we received, I think in the first meeting, address the fact that Venice is very loud. Um, and so in order to create kind of a park-like setting there that we would need some type of sound barrier um, or something to soften the park, that was a comment we also heard from our subcommittee as well. Next question. Will the stage be raised at all? Um, I mean, again, this is something we can kind of figure out. I think the first version had the seating raised and the stage kind of like a Greek amphitheater, the stage was lower. I'm not sure what the option was for the second version, for the Roots version. But again, it can be state, I mean, this is stuff we can, with your comments, we can figure out. Um, so Venice Boulevard is not our jurisdiction. I would defer to the city of Los Angeles. Um, I know that there's, um, we, I think the two crosswalks are at Bagley and at um, Culver and Venice. So I'm not sure, I know that there's a whole traffic algorithm that dictates what, where crosswalks can be and, and usually, especially across Venice, there would need to be a light. So that would have to be um, something that the city of Los Angeles would feel is warranted and could help us with. Next question. Oh, sorry. Oh, can't figure out how to vote. Hopefully, yeah, we will. Uh, if not, let's make sure we get a chance to add in after. Yes, you will have an opportunity to vote after. Great. Next question. I feel like I'm on like a game show. Uh, <laughs> no, we do not have elevations on the Venice side, but we need them. So it sounds like that's something that we can improve on. Okay. Why do these options seem to reflect very little of the opinions expressed at the first meeting? Um, I'm not sure why you feel that. Um, I feel like they went through the, I mean, maybe we can um, go back through the presentation, but I do think that what we, what the team tried to do was take all of the things that we heard and then try to incorporate those comments into things such as stage, seating, lighting, um, parking reduction, creating more open space, creating flexibility, so. Next question. Whatever provides more shade, the place is intended to be activated during the day. This place is intended to be activated during the day. Yes, um, I think it is activated. It's meant to be activated day and night. It's meant to be kind of an extension of anywhere that you would go. Something that you could do at the night, go to the theater, um, feel safe in the park, have, have um, play during the day, do Frisbee. So that is the intention. Okay, so have you considered using the southwest end of the park on Canfield instead of the southern corner as a focus for the park in order to better include palms? Um, so this goes back to the Canfield entryway. So I do feel like that's an, that is something that needs to still continue to be addressed. Iconic corner, I think iconic is a, is a word. I think it's meant to be special, something that, um, me, you know, could be 
unique. Um, when we're talking about something iconic, maybe it's something historical. I don't know. I don't think we know. I think that that could be a really neat place for public art. Um, and if it were going to be public art, we would want to work with um, our public art team and our cultural affairs commission, as well as with the city of Los Angeles. So I think that we just identified that that could be something that we put something really cool in. Yeah, and Elaine, just to reiterate too, it's also like if you walk through downtown Culver right now, do you go through the park as part of your walk or is something missing there to kind of capture your attention to kind of bring you in a little bit? That's Perfect. also the idea of like that visual cue. You should probably be answering these questions. This is your design. You're doing a great job. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Elaine, okay. we didn't mean to have you answer all the questions, but <laughs> we actually can jump in. That's okay. No, I, yeah. I, I want to help because I, I want people to feel heard and that we're, that we're answering. Mm -hmm. So, all right, let's keep going. How are you addressing the desire to include the shared history of both Palms and Culver City and the new design of the park? Yeah, so like what Elaine said, it, it does seem like um, there's a um, perhaps missing in what we're visually showing right now in the renderings, but we can, um, yeah, we can improve on that. And regarding that shared history, I gain like access to the park. I think that's what they're they're trying to say. So we'll we'll find ways to improve that. And also, I would like to say, um, even if there's a plaque that recognizes, you know, the historical um, mm -hmm. value from palms as well, I think that that could be something like a good memento to be looked at. Yeah. And um, will there be some type of sound mitigation for Venice Boulevard and the Sage? Um, um, I mean, there could be, but really right now what we were just showing or we were proposing was just some, um, it would be softscape mitigation, just maybe having more of a, a density of landscaping, but not any physical barriers again, because there is that hope that this could be open to that Venice Boulevard side. Will a local artist be asked to provide a sculpture work at the corner? Uh, potentially, yeah, this, that, um, this could be something that the city facilitates with the arts community in downtown. Why can't focal art be included with parking? Um, yeah, it could. I mean, if we look at the dimensions of the sidewalk, um, perhaps it's smaller. There could still be something at that corner there. It just wouldn't be um, as expansive um, because we need to consider all those ADA considerations as well. Considering the base of the park is so small, why are there no design schemes to include raised architecture, second stories, et cetera? Hmm, that's interesting. Um, I'm not sure if there's any, you know, uh, vertical considerations when we're looking, we're looking at this park. Um, I'm not sure what we would use uh, second stories for, but, um, and I am not sure any modifications we would want to make to the actors gang. Um, we, the idea is that that would stay there and there wouldn't be any, you know, physical uh, modifications to that building. What are we supposed to do? <laughs> uh, I think that's probably oh, somebody a little lost with the. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> For parking, would ask you to consider instead of reduced parallel parking, how about just flipping the diagonal parking, having the diagonal parking on the other side? Um, I think that dimension wise, it, um, that diagonal parking still takes up more space as it is right now. So I'm not entirely sure what this question's asking. I think it's just instead of having the diagonal parking against the, um, the, the island, it would be putting the diagonal parking against the park. But I think what you're asking for is do people want parking adjacent to the park? Yeah. Whichever way it's mm -hmm. angled or do they want to have more space for the park? Right, like slightly more space with um, less parking. Exactly, that's the, that's the key um, consideration we're trying to we're trying to get out here. Um, how would you reduce noise from Venice for the proposed stage? Um, again, right now it is through like a softscape trees, um, those types of landscape buffer interventions. Venice is noisy, so that is something that would have to be fleshed out. Um, how do you? That's yeah, that's definitely something that would be need to consider further down the road in the in the next design stages. Um, with the programming, who would be programming the amphitheater? That would um, 
probably fall to the city. Um, mm-hmm. You know, obviously the Actors Gang has some work that they do in the park. Um, usually they do it every summer. We have other events that want to be in the park. I think um, one of our cultural affairs commissioners is here. We have lots of local arts groups that want to be. So um, I think it would be, you know, in our lease we've, we, with the city of Los Angeles, there's a programming component in there. Um, so that would have to be something flushed out, but it would probably be the city open to, you know, different groups in the city of Los Angeles and Culver City or wherever. What are the plans for the Eastern corner of the park? Um, so that corner, I mean, there's landscape improvements all around the park uh, that, you know, when I mentioned what are some of those physical considerations that we're having when we're thinking of the layout, the actors game on the eastern corner is something that we're considering too. So um, I know we didn't really show that view, but I think some of this will be answered when we have those um, views from, from each direction. Would parking across the street be extended or limited to Trader Joe's time? Mm. Yeah, that's not something that we have quite fleshed out. Um, I don't know, Elaine. Yeah, so we haven't really, as part of this conceptual plan, Mm -hmm. we haven't talked about how the operational side of this works in regards to the parking. That would be something we have to still figure out uh, with our parking authority. Okay. Um, the shade canopy will make it look like the stage belongs to Actors Gang. There's already a dearth of performing stages in Culver City and Los Angeles. The building belongs to both cities. Um, well, I mean, I think the stage, I think there's a lot of uses for what the stage could be. It just wouldn't belong to the Actors Gang. Um, as Elaine mentioned, it would be managed by the city. Um, and um, perhaps I think there's a demand for these types of spaces and there is a flexibility there. So I know it wouldn't, it wouldn't belong to Actors Gang. Is that the, okay. Yeah, we have a few more. Um, Let's go. Four more questions. Okay. Um, a lot of folks are concerned about water for grass. Will water catchment address the issue to ensure water is dealt with on site? Um, yeah, so storm water management, um, water catchment systems, by, um, some type of yeah catchment basin that could be a part of that grass area mm-hmm, when it, as part of that like ecological approach to the park. It very well could be. We need to be careful about the amount of food options in downtown, more options C to cannibalize the existing dining options. Yeah, so I, I see this as a concern and people did express that uh, concern in the first meeting as well. So that's where we kind of uh, reformatted that kiosk to a more pop-up flexible kiosk to kind of address um, that it really could be anything. And, and actually could, there's a possibility, it doesn't have to be food. It could be, you know, a clothing store or something. So there, there's some flexibility there. And the idea is that it would, you know, support the park as what Elaine mentioned about activating the park and helping to activate and support uh, the downtown community and the downtown programming. Um, we need to be careful about the amount, oh, sorry, that's the same question. <laughs> oh, yes, this is the next one. I would like to see something targeting teens also, parks, um, often have kid spaces and are inviting to adults and things like stages, but how about some foosball ping pong tables? That's interesting. Yeah, those those are like the furnishing elements that could be added um, to that flexible flexible space. Um, yeah, that's, the, that's a great suggestion. Why no option without parking on Culver to expand park and open space to parking structures across the street? Um, I think the idea of like having it be reduced parking instead of no parking at all is that we do recognize there's um, there is programmed events there right now. So having a safe drop off zone is important. Um, and for accessibility reasons, also having some um, parking spaces where people will be able to leave their cars that are unable to cross the street or park somewhere else. That those were con- considerations that we made for having reduced parking instead. Okay, in the interest of time, I think some people are still adding questions, but we're going to close um, the questions at the 31st. Questions? Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Um, can we consider shorter, thicker palms rather than tall, skinny palms, also florals around the historic building to highlight it and enhance the overall beauty? Yeah, those like landscaping palettes, landscaping details and, um, you know, those planting plans. Uh, once those are fleshed out in the, the later concept during like the schematic, that, that would be uh, a great, yeah, those are great suggestions. Why is there kiosk if there's a possibility of a promenade where cart and vendors could park and operate? Yeah, so they could work in unison with one another um, and the promenade area or that parking area, um, it could have uh, more, it's like a temporary event, right? And when it's not used for temporary events, um, it could be a walking promenade, it can be um, overflow from the kiosk, or it can be um, some flexible seating, like I know we mentioned, um, perhaps not showing those, those furnishing elements, um, but that could be an option along, along that promenade. Um, Jessica, I would like to add that, you know, part of activating it from a kiosk point of view is that having more eyes, you know, more eyes on the street they used to say, but you know, more eyes on the park would be great. And so, you know, for those, it, it, it would be, um, you would have greater hours of operation with the kiosk on. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's gonna be something that, um, the more the more eyes we have on there, you know, the, the more secure the yeah. place can feel as well. Um, great, so next question. I understand the pop-up idea is from 10 years ago. However, things look very different now, perhaps looking at it from a new lens. Yeah, great, uh, uh, lots of interesting comments on the pop-up and great comments on the pop-up. Um, is it possible to have images or movies reflecting on the historic building at night? Uh, Montreal does this to great effect. Yeah, that's really cool. That's like a part of that, um, you know, public art component that was important that people expressed in the first meeting too. Um, that, that's a great suggestion for having a flexible um, public art component. And as far as the programming goes too, um, there was also like movies at night as well. Um, so I know what you're talking about it's more like reflecting on the building, but yeah, that's very cool. Great. Uh, we are done with the Mentimeter questions, but Leah has summarized some some questions that came out from the Zoom chat. Anything about restrooms? Rest, um, yeah, restroom. So the idea is that there could be a restroom added to a kiosk as well. Um, and like Elaine mentioned, um, having a restroom and kiosk, how that can help uh, activate that park area, bring people to the park and, you know, be a, a source, a resource for the community there. So it would be, if there was a restroom, the idea is that it would be attached to the, the kiosk, I think. Okay. I know you have closing remarks, Jessica, but do you have any, do you have time for a few more questions or should we? kind of wrap it up. Um, yeah, we can do a few more questions. Um, that's okay. Okay. Is there additional green space added with reduced parking? Um, Is there? Additional green space added with reduced parking. It seems as though the parking spaces are replaced with more hardscape. Yeah, there is additional green space. I'm um, like, we should kind of like that part gets pulled in a little bit more for that first option. Um, Holis, I think for the second option, instead of the additional green space, it creates a promenade. Um, so that- um, So for the second one, there's definitely, there's more hard more space, hard but space. it's planned yeah. on being more of a multifunctional space. Mm -hmm, exactly. And um, Elaine, you can cut, I think you can cut off the questions anytime when you want to, um, when you want us to wrap up. So we, so I, yep, I'm sorry, yes. my uh, yep. phone on exactly. my wrist is slow. <laughs> so I'm sitting here <laughs> thinking we, we still have 10 minutes. Um, so, so what I will say is firstly, thank you so much for all of these very thoughtful comments. Um, when we're doing something like this, we're not all going to agree. We're all going to have very different opinions. And that is the reason why we have community meetings is to be able to gather all of those diverse opinions and to be able to take that all into account and, and really create plans that are thoughtful and representative. And I know I've seen some comments um, that people felt maybe some of their comments weren't really reflected in the plans. Um, I would really encourage folks, um, if you haven't gone back, 
I think the team really did try to summarize what we heard from the first meeting, the recordings there and some of the presentation is there. Um, but the but really we, we want to take all of this information. So we've done our best to answer the questions that we've got so far. We have a very copious chat section here that we will now go through. And as we mentioned before, there's some, some commonality in some of those chats that we're seeing. So um, all of that will be taken into um, consideration as we're as we're going with um, our next steps. And so to that end, some of our next steps are the following. We're going to take all this information, we're going to summarize it, and we're going to be putting it back on our website. Um, and for those that didn't didn't have a chance to comment tonight, or would still like to comment, or would still like to be part of the Mentimeter, similar to last time, you can go ahead and weigh in so that it's open for our whole community, whether they were able to be here or not. So we'll have the recording up. People can do what we call it our, our real time survey. So they can actually see the presentation. Um, they can look at the, the PowerPoint and then they can weigh in as well on those survey results. Um, and then we will probably close that. So we will pick a date, probably maybe a week and a half or two weeks from now, where we'll, we'll close that and then we'll re-summarize that and we'll put that on the website. Um, at this point in the process, our next step is to go to city council. So we then take all of this information um, all of the comments that you've given us, and we do some more revisions on the plans. And then our next community period is actually to do it as a full-blown um, public meeting in front of the city council, where we will present both of these plans. We will present all the comments. You know, we will try to summarize as much as possible all the comments that have been received. Um, you know, and we will have a conversation at the city council level and get their feedback. Um, and so the way that that will work is we go to city council first, we get their feedback, they may give us direction one way or another, um, and then we'll go from there. If we get to a place and when we get to a place that the city council approves or prefers um, a particular schematic or a conceptual design, then we go to the city of Los Angeles and we will take that, that design to the city of Los Angeles. And then assuming that gets approved or we get comments or feedback and, and we revise it, um, once that conceptual plan's done, I think as Jessica mentioned, it would move on to the schematic design. And the schematic design is when things get a little bit more detailed. Um, when you start seeing signs, when you start seeing specific lighting, when you start seeing um, art um, or what the art process might be. So, um, so it's not, so it's our second meeting, we're still kind of at the beginning, we're at the beginning of it all. Um, I also wanted to just reiterate that the city of Culver City is funding the conceptual plan development, but we do not have funding for the revitalization. So while we start this process, part of the reason why we're doing that is to be able to build a plan that's grantable. So to be looking at stormwater, to be looking at art, to be looking at community connections, because we want to work with the city of Los Angeles and we are hoping to go out and get grants for this um, and be able to, you know, create this space um, and to be able to budget for it. But I just want to be like extraordinarily clear, we do not have money for this to build it, that we will, we're dreaming it and then we will somehow make this happen. But that's kind of where we are in the process. So I hope that's clear. So we're gonna take everything we heard tonight. We're going to summarize that all. The team's gonna summarize that. We're gonna put it on the website. Uh, and then we're going to bring it to city council for the conceptual um, discussion. That's a full blown public meeting. Everybody can participate in that. Um, and then we will move to the city of Los Angeles and do that process. And then after that, um, we're going to go out for grant funding um, as Todd is texting you right now to let me know that the second part, that schematic design part, we don't have funding for that yet either. So we have to ask for it. We're doing everything baby steps. Um, so that's kind of where we're at. Does anyone have any quick questions on the process? Please use it. Yep. We will absolutely remind you of other meetings. Thanks, Elliot, nice to see you. Thanks for being here. Okay, so what we're gonna do is once we wave, are you waving to me or you want me to wave to you? Yay. Um, so what we're gonna do is we will, um, once we get everything up on the website, we'll have Winnie, we'll go ahead and send that out to you so you guys can, um, you can access it. And then of course we are available to you. So I hope you all have my number um, and my email. Um, we've, you, we have a team here. We can make sure that you have, if you have specific questions about the 
design you want to talk to SWA about or Mentimeter, we can get you in touch with any of our team members. So um, we are here to continue the conversation. And um, our next step now is to take all of this good information. There's a lot here. And we will start putting a package together to bring to city council. And as soon as we know when that's going, we will let you know. Yes, we will definitely, definitely give you advanced agenda um, notification. Okay, so with that, thank you so much. Again, happy Earth Day. Have a lovely, lovely evening and a good weekend. Enjoy the spring season. And um, we will see you at city council because we want you all there. Okay, have Great a good job, night, guys. everybody. Thank you.